little spike for a blur. I like it. If he runs off on the rat, I think he got us. He got our whip. This wasn't the big buck I was looking for, but it didn't matter. It was sort of a sense of calm that came over me that, yes, this will work, and you haven't lost your mind thinking you can rattle in whitetails. Here he comes. He's coming up right through there. He's got nice tall tines. He ain't bad buck. He's just not that big. He's not that old, huh? He's nowhere near 150. And yet another buck comes rolling in. Again, not quite what we're looking for, but these bucks have potential, and they're definitely hunting for fights and hunting for girls. After rattling a couple of bucks in, my confidence was high. I knew this was going to work, but the hard part is when you rattle and you get a buck in, to try to control your excitement and make a good decision. Now, is this a mature buck that I want? Because I was really looking for something nice. I've shot a 150-inch whitetail here, so I was really hoping to get a nice mature buck in that neighborhood. Nice walk, nice walk. There he is. Yes. Hey, you can only see his rat. There's a doe's ears. Let's just see if we can grunt him over here. When you rattle, you want to make it seem like a real life situation. Now, the last time I saw a buck fight, they don't just sit there and hit horns and not move. It's usually an all out brawl knocking trees over, kicking up dirt, scratching around. So make your rattling sequence the same way. Get after it. Be very aggressive. After rattling somewhere between seven and 10 bucks in the very first day, I was blown away. This was ultimately the best whitetail hunt I had ever had, and I hadn't even come close to shooting a shooter yet. It didn't matter though, because we were out there on the ground and bringing these bucks to us. I don't know, maybe I'm losing my mind with seeing all these bucks rattling in a man, but I just didn't have the heart to squeeze the trigger and end my hunt on day one when we've got all these bucks running around. Really nice. And next year, it's going to be even better. But there was one thing that was going to be changing. After a great day of rattling, well, there was a snowstorm on the way, and I wasn't sure what that would do to the whitetails. Sometimes it can kick that rut into high gear. Sometimes it can shut them down. Well, for once in the world, the weatherman was right. It is snowing out. We've got probably two to three inches already. And by the looks of it, it's going to keep coming down. This should make the hunting really good today. I'm thinking this is going to turn the whitetails on. They're rutting hard already. Add this extra snow. Now we're going to be able to see them well. Might be a little chilly, but I think it's going to make for some great spot and stock. As Melissa and her camera crew load up for their short hop out to the woods, the excitement is building. With the first snow of the season and falling temperatures, coupled with increasing rutting activity, things are definitely looking up. I love hunting in the snow. To me, it's one of the best times to hunt. There's a lot of added advantages. It makes the woods super quiet on that first day when it's snowing. Secondly, it makes it very limited visibility for you, but for the bucks as well. So rattling could be a perfect setup. That way, the bucks wouldn't know what's going on and they're gonna have to come in close. If there was any question whether the snow was going to help or hurt me, well, it was answered after the very first rattling sequence. He might be a shooter. I don't know. I really don't think he's that big. I think he's pretty nice. Where's your rattling horn? I think rattling's going to be too close right now. Well, that buck just ran off the car. And we just had a beautiful buck coming in the snow. Still have time left, and today is the perfect day for hunting. We've got just steady snow. It's silent in here, and I think these bucks are just gonna keep coming out. It takes a pretty hardcore hunter to sit out for hours in a driving snowstorm, but that's exactly what we did, and it really paid off. He's walking sideways right there. 
we had been standing in that snow for quite a while and looked like we had the perfect camel. You don't get two inches of snow layered up on you because you just got out in the woods. He might be a shooter, let's get ready. I can't tell you. I think he's a shooter, but he's a big nine pointer. He's coming, he's still coming. He's pretty damn cool. What do you think? I think you should shoot him. Huh? I think you should shoot him. There's your shot if you want him right there. If you want him, take him. This buck came all the way into probably 15, 20 yards and just stood there, giving me all the time in the world. Yes. Damn it. So I made the tough decision, didn't squeeze the trigger, and that buck spun around and left. There he goes. There he goes. He was pretty. He was a beautiful buck, but he was kind of thin and I don't think I really wanted my hunt to be over yet. I was having too much fun. And I knew that as it snowed and as the temps dropped, the hunting was probably gonna just keep getting better. I think he was a shooter for sure. I mean, a perfect 30, 40 yard shot. That wasn't a huge one, but I think he was sure damn nice. He would have been big enough, I guarantee it. It would have been perfect. He looked big to me. <laughs> We've seen a lot of good deer. And she was very patient, but I wanted to pull the trigger a couple times on some real nice bucks. No, he was a good one, but we got plenty of time. Oh. There's a lot of them in here. Are you chilly? Getting there. Are you? Mm -mm. I'm not That's cold then either. I'm not cold either then. <laughs> Actually, I'm kind of hot. <laughs> Looks like a nice buck there. It's not quite big enough. There might be something bigger behind it. The snow has finally eased up and the rutting activity is nearing its peak. The big bucks are on the move and Melissa and her guide are using the quiet of the snow to get in close. This is one heck of a rut. Well, we're definitely going into the right area. Yeah, it takes a big buck to do his horns around that. Once the snow stopped, we knew this was the perfect time to use this quiet, fresh snow to sneak through the woods and try to get up on some really nice bucks. This should be a good setup. Yeah. All these cattails and stuff, super thick. They're coming out of that thick stuff. With that river funneling them in, this is the perfect pin spot right here. The other thing is if they're rutting, this is a perfect area for those bucks to push those does around. Little meadow for them. Yep. And they'll never see us here. Nope. Well, this was a perfect setup. We got there, got next to a big bush, and within 10, 15 minutes, the rutting began. Here comes some deer monster right here. Here they come. Look at them all. That's cool. Get ready, there might be a bigger one behind them. Yeah, there's another one coming right there. They're all kind of just filtering down to the yep. same area. This is going to work. You're going to get a shot if he comes in here. We landed right in the middle of this rutting activity. The bucks were pushing, does were running. The bucks couldn't even keep up with these does, and they didn't know who to push away and who to chase. Well, I like it too, because it's 150 yards in here. Everything's doable right in here. Yep. There's another one coming. It's got a huge body. Oh, yeah. Hey, he looks pretty good. This rack's not too... No. Oh, he is all rutted up. He's grunting. Look at him. Man, he's sure got a big body. He's definitely the king of these guys around here. Well, he's really docking that dog. What do you think? I think he's too small. What do you think? No, he's not big enough. No. Yet. It turned out to be quite a show, but unfortunately, the biggest buck just wasn't quite what I was looking for. He had a big old blocky body and was chasing the doe round and round. It probably would have been tough to even get a shot on him because he wasn't stopping. He was on her tail and that's all he had on his mind. And that buck, if he only had a rack to match the size of that body, I think that's the biggest rutted up body we've seen. Yeah, yeah, he sure had a big body, that's for sure. He was, phew. Right now, I think they're coming on this edge. It's gonna be my guess. Oh, here they come. There's a buck. I think he's pretty good. What do you think, Shane Taylor? After several days of some really hard hunting, the temperatures had finally started warming back up, the snow started melting, and the bucks were still on the move. I got him if I want him, but no, he's too low. High tines, but he's really thin. Really thin. Again, not quite a shooter, walks right to us. 
to have this many cool 125, 130 inch bucks walk right to you and stand 15 yards broadside, well that would get any whitetail hunter going and it was cool. We spotted a really nice buck, just got a quick glimpse of him going into the brush chasing the doe, and I decided this is a buck I'd like to go after. Do you think that buck is bedded just right up this way? Yeah, down this river ways. We'll use this river bank. The wind's coming out of this way, so we'll use this bank, we'll get closer to him, and then we'll sneak into the trees and see if we can spot him. Adam and I decided to use this nice steep edge on the river bank to try to get in close to this buck. Now the whole area was covered in bedding area. There would be deer everywhere. So we wanted to hug that edge as tight as possible to try to not kick up deer as we went, maybe spooking them off. Still haven't seen them any yet. This grass is super high. I honestly don't think we're gonna see until we get almost on top. It's gonna be really tough. So as we crept along, we finally got in close to about where we thought we saw the buck and the doe the last time. I don't see him in here, but boy. This is a piece bed in a little divot. I never see one over here. Once we got there, we cut in through the brush, and as we were looking and just slowly creeping along, boom, there were does right on us. There's the buck right there. Stand up and look at the other way. Oh, nice shot. Nothing yeah. like having a buck get up super oh. close to you. 30 yards, I bet. Well, guess what? 30 yards with a slug gun in his tracks. What an awesome deal. As I slowly squeeze that trigger, the buck dropped right in his tracks. And right there, that is why I wanted a slug gun in Montana. Look at this buck. It's a nice one, Melissa. Wow. Real nice white tail. Check out the mass on this guy. Just great mass, really nice brows, just an overall nice mature buck. Walking up to this buck, I couldn't have been happier. The entire hunt, the entire trip was really one of the best whitetail hunts I've ever been on. This buck was in high brush. You could barely even see his vitals, but with a slug gun, you drop it right where you need, and this will bust through any brush. Adam and I put in some really, really long hours, stuck with it, and we got to see a beautiful buck go down within 30 yards with a slug gun. That's what hunting in the Powder River should ultimately be like. This is one beautiful whitetail.